Everybody, and good Monday evening to you. Hope you and yours had a, a good final weekend of February. Today was the last day of the month, and before we get to the details on the forecast for the coming week and the coming month, wanted to do a start this evening by looking back at where we've been in the month of February. It's going to come out in the wash as about a degree warmer than the average. Now, this was the least extreme of the three winter weather months. December was very mild, almost seven degrees warmer than average. January was very cold, almost five degrees colder than average, and February was much, much closer to the average. And uh, as I mentioned late last week, coming up tomorrow evening on my weather blog, ericwfmj.com, and here on Weather for Weather Geeks, we're going to be reviewing the winter and also the winter forecast, how it did compared to uh, what actually happened. And overall, you know, a little sneak preview here, the forecast was pretty good. It's just uh, things didn't line up kind of as expected as far as the coldest and warmest months. Uh, the We expected... December to be pretty cold, February to be pretty warm, and instead uh, December was warm, January was really cold, and February was kind of ho-hum. It all came out in the wash as, you know, pretty good forecast, but we'll get to that uh, tomorrow evening on Weather for Weather Geeks, but today's high of 39, just a shade below the average on this final day of the uh, month. Now, it was a pretty active month in all types of precipitation, including snow. Now, the number compared to average is not super impressive. But 15.7 is where we came in at the airport, 0.7 above the average. So much like temperatures, yeah, nothing really to write home about here. But it was a, an active month with several bouts of precipitation. Some of it was rain and sleet and mixed precipitation. Some of it was snow. Easily our biggest storm of the winter season and of the month was early on this month. Uh, between the 3rd and 4th, we had 11 inches worth of snow at the Youngstown Warren Airport. And speaking of the airport, here's where we stand for seasonal snow. Now, when I posted this on social earlier, it surprised some people, but you got to remember December had hardly any snow. So for the season, we are running behind last year's pace, and actually we're running about five inches shy of average. We're about 50 inch, We're at about 50 inches now at the Youngstown Warren Airport for the season. Last year through the end of meteorological winter, we had 53.5. So again, a little bit surprising considering how active it's been, but keep in mind, you know, some of this was freezing rain that we've been dealing with lately. And, and keep in mind also, one third of meteorological winter was relatively snow free back in December. All right, meteorological spring starts tomorrow. Tomorrow evening, not only will we review the winter and the winter forecast, we're going to take a look at the spring forecast as well. Here's a look at climatology. Uh, our average highs go from 41 on the first day of March to 75 by the end of May. Spring can be an extreme season. Now, when we look at long-term averages, spring is our most extreme season. The difference between the highest temperature on record and the lowest temperature on record for any season, yeah, it's biggest in spring. 95, the highest temperature, and 10 below, the coldest temperature ever recorded in meteorological spring. Winter and fall tied for second place, 98 degree difference there. And no surprise, summer, kind of the least extreme, the least variation, if you will. The coldest temperature back uh, in uh, June, uh, I don't remember the year now. Uh, Maybe 1982. I'll have, to, I'll have to check that. Anyway, in June of some year, we had a temperature of 30 degrees. 103, of course, is our all-time record high, so a 70-degree difference between those numbers. All right, we're going to talk about the spring forecast tomorrow. Let's start out this evening with a look at the March outlook. This is from the Climate Prediction Center, and I, I uh, did not uh, have any arguments with their uh, forecast. It looks like a pretty chilly, unsettled month in the Pacific Northwest out into the Northern Rockies. Warmer than average, early spring. In a lot of the southeast, stuff is already blooming, and it's really going to explode in places such as Atlanta and Charleston and New Orleans and places like that. Around here, you know, I, I kind of think it may be a tale of you know, two halves of the month. The first half might be pretty mild, the second half maybe not so much. It might come out at the end of the month in the wash as warmer than average, but uh, I suspect we have higher chances of warmer than average days during the first half of the month of March. Precipitation-wise, pretty high confidence. This is going to be an unsettled month. The temperature forecast and the precipitation forecast actually pretty classic La Nina look to this map. Uh, La Ninas often are characterized by an active jet stream coming into the Pacific Northwest and bringing frequent bouts of precipitation to the lower Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. And actually, this map kind of looks like what we just had this winter. Again, we're going to review the winter tomorrow. But overall, the winter was kind of typical La Nina in terms of precipitation, and March looks to follow suit. All right, on this final evening of February, woo, 
nothing going on. I mean, it is dead quiet across the country this evening, with most of the action in the Pacific Northwest, where a pretty good fire hose of moisture will continue to impact them in the coming days. For us, just a couple of, a couple of uh, minor systems over the next couple of days. It'll be a cloudier day on Tuesday, still a milder day in the wake of this warm front. Now, a little bit of mid-level moisture. We might squeeze out a rain shower or two before the afternoon is through. Might be a stray snowflake by evening. On Wednesday, another weak front heads our way. Actually, this one's a little bit stronger than tomorrow's. And so we have a better chance of maybe getting a couple of rain showers in here before the late afternoon and evening hours are through on Wednesday. Also, this may end as a brief period of light snow or flurries Wednesday night. Maybe a stray flurry early Thursday with the lakes becoming active. Now, this is a colder air mass, so we'll probably see some lake effect flurries somewhere in northern Ohio early on Thursday. But otherwise, a benign day, just the coldest day of the bunch coming up on our Thursday. Right now, I mentioned that fire hose of moisture coming into the Pacific Northwest, active jet stream in the northern tier of states. This is going to evolve, though, as we go into this first week of March, and the ridging that is taking place now across Southern California and the uh, southwestern U.S., it'll be replaced by a trough coming into the West Coast, and oftentimes when you see a trough coming into the West Coast, in the Intermountain West, downstream of that, you get a ridge popping. Everything's kind of interconnected. So by the first weekend of the month, you got this big trough out here. Downstream, nice ridge. And so the warmest weather of the year so far is coming our way late this weekend. I have mid-60s in our forecast coming up for Sunday. Now, it's going to come with a chance for showers both Saturday and Sunday. But if we have to bust out the umbrella a couple of times, hey, I don't think a lot of us will mind if we have temperatures, especially Sunday, getting somewhere north of 60. That's territory we have not been in yet in 2022. We'll talk more about the longer range uh, trends in future editions of Weather for Weather Geeks. And again tomorrow evening, a review of the winter, a preview of the spring, and everything else you need to know as uh, we head deeper into this first uh, several days of the month of March. In the meantime, thank you for watching tonight, and I'll see you back here on Tuesday.